In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Seat of Wisdom, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> this beautiful reading for the second Sunday of Lent is so rich with uh, reflections and meditations that we could be here for days reflecting upon so many of the various aspects of this beautiful gospel. It is important to know that preceding this, a few days before this episode, Jesus had revealed to his disciples that he would undergo suffering and his passion through betrayal and be handed over to the Jews uh, be handed over to the Jews. And so they had had a heavy heart when they were going up the mountain uh, and were uh, uh, saddened by the words that Jesus had revealed to them. And then Jesus does something magnificent uh, to console them, that he gives them a glimpse of his glory. Saint Leo the Great says that the primary purpose of the transfiguration was to give the disciples, the apostles, courage and strength when they were to witness our Lord's crucifixion and death. That this memory of his glory, that this glimpse of his glory was to be, was to sustain them through that terrible dark time of his, uh, of his death on the cross and to give them courage and strength in, and faith in him. In the same way, our Lord also consoles us. We too pass through sufferings and trials in life. We too pass through difficult times. And in the same way, our Lord gives us consolations constantly to strengthen us and to help us to persevere in following him. First and foremost, he gives us the longing, the desire, the memory of the thought of heaven that all this will come to an end when we finally pass through this valley of tears and reach our heavenly homeland. And so the thought of heaven, the longing for heaven, the desire for heaven is to be, as it were, in the same way, a consolation for us in the suffering of this world, knowing that it will all come to an end and that we will all, all have a share in his glory and his eternal in his, in, his, in his eternal life. We too also recognize, as St. Peter was so inspired to say, Lord, it is good to be here. It is always good to be near to our Lord. It is where we belong. We belong to be near Jesus, close to him. And this reminds us one of the ways in which we can help ourselves each day is to keep ourselves always in the presence of God to keep our minds, our hearts, always united to Christ. It's when we allow ourselves to become distracted, that we turn away from Christ, that we become forgetful of him, that we fall into trouble. Peter reminds us, Lord, it is good to be here, that we must keep our hearts, our eyes, always upon Jesus at all times, at all places, keeping ourselves united to him in order that we can uh, persevere and be ever more faithful in following him. And our Lord also permitted in this beautiful miracle uh, uh, the appearance of Moses and Elijah who are, who are reaffirming that this is the promised one. This is the one they spoke of. This is the one that they foretold would come to save Israel from its sins. He is the Messiah, the long-awaited one. And then God the Father also uh, reaffirming this with his voice, this is my beloved son, listen to him. As if God the Father is also echoing, echoing the words of Our Lady at the wedding feast of Cana, do whatever he tells you. That we are being instructed in wisdom here. Do whatever he tells you, listen to him. That it is in following Jesus, in conforming our life to him, 
in listening to him, his words, and putting them into action in our life that we will find true life, true happiness, true joy in this world that no suffering can take away, no matter how bitter that suffering may be, that nothing can take away that joy. Even when we think of the Christians who are suffering so horribly in the Middle East and undergoing such torments, and we should not be surprised that this is nothing new. Uh, throughout history, Christians have been, per have been persecuted. Many Christians, uh, we know, starting with St. Stephen being stoned to death for his witnessing to Christ and uh, others being, other the apostles being crucified and uh, even one of the apostles being flayed, his skin taken off of him while he was alive and, and of course many martyrs being beheaded or thrown to the animals. And of course we can't forget St. Lawrence as he was roasting over a fire, uh, look, turn me over, I'm done on this side, that the joy, their faith could not be, uh, could, not nothing, could not in any way be hampered uh, by the suffering they are undergoing, knowing that they would be united soon to our Lord. And so we too need to listen to our Lord, put our, uh, uh, and keep our hearts and our eyes always upon him in this world which is trying to distract us in so many ways from Christ. We see how ungodly and how dark the world is increasingly becoming in, in rejecting Christ, his teachings, and his church, and that we will only survive this, we will only make it through to that promised land if we listen to Christ and keep our hearts and our eyes upon him. May our Blessed Mother help us to unite ourselves to her immaculate heart, that we might always listen to Jesus speaking to us, that we might always keep ourselves in his presence, and that we might remember his promise of eternal life in our sufferings and trials, never give, giving in to discouragement, never giving uh, 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 downhearted uh, through these crosses that he calls us to share in, but carrying them with ever greater courage and faith and fidelity, knowing that we too shall share in that eternal Easter of the beatific vision without end if we remain faithful to him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.